If you're into documentaries and you don't mind ones that will make you both sad and irate, you might want to check out Take Care of Maya on Netflix. It's emotionally investing and also draining. So let's dive in. When 10-year-old Maya Kowalski was admitted to Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital in 2016, nothing could have prepared her or her family for what they were about to go through. As the medical team tried to understand her rare illness, they began to question the basic truths that bound the Kowalskis together. Suddenly, Maya was in state custody, despite two parents who were desperate to bring their daughter home. So Maya was diagnosed with this rare condition known as Complex Regional Pain Syndrome, or CRPS. And what it does is to basically have her brain signal to her body that when an injury occurs, instead of those sensations lessening over time and having the pain dissipate, the pain instead grows to unbearable levels. And all the nerve endings, they kind of register any stimulus to the nth degree, and then that exaggerates the pain to the individual. Now, the documentary likened it to that if a feather brushed up against the arm of somebody with CRPS, their body would then register it as a knife cutting into them or a hammer crushing their bones. I mean, the pain response is just all out of whack. And there are some pretty extreme measures that have been proven to work, but they're not really approved in the U.S. right now. And we're told the story of Maya and her family through firsthand accounts from Maya herself, her father, brother, doctor, and through numerous recordings that her mom had captured. These paint an amazing picture of what the family dealt with, including all the frustrating dead ends they came upon through trying to get Maya's diagnosis figured out. Now, her mom, Beata, was a nurse, so this woman was very knowledgeable about the medical profession, and because she wanted to figure out what was going on with Maya and get her treated and cured, she took copious and extremely detailed notes. And we're not talking about just at some of the doctor visits. I mean, this woman wrote down everything and anything. It was like she was a stenographer for her daughter's life. And she also audio recorded just about everything, which again helps to capture the sentiments, emotions, and interactions that had anything to do with Maya's care. And there are also some video recordings, so we get to see the documentation in yet another form of how Maya was feeling, progressing, or suffering. And a lot of it was also captured by a physician for their own research. So it's not like it was the family trying to just limit what proof was available. Now, the angry part of this documentary comes after Maya had undergone successful treatment and had been progressively improving. Well, her body hit a rough patch and many of her painful symptoms returned. So like how just about any parent would, especially seeing their child in excruciating pain, they took her to the ER at Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital in Florida, where they lived. And this is when the crap show just begins. And then it also takes on some very unbelievable and infuriating turns. Now, when watching this, I mean, it put thoughts into my head of pitchforks and torches and then wishing certain players would become unalive. I mean, what the family went through at this hospital, it is unimaginable. And yet, we're shown that it happens quite frequently. Now, the doctors didn't believe Maya or her mom. They didn't run the tests or even begin treatments. Instead, they called in a social worker who works for a for-profit company. And after a brief encounter, the social worker decides that Maya is in harm's way with her parents. So she's taken from them. The parents are ordered by the court that they can't see or talk to her, which of course devastates everybody, Maya included. The way this documentary lays each portion of the story out, it plays like a fictionalized drama with complications building upon each other in an attempt to get characters to break. So it is a very engaging narrative and the storytelling is incredibly compelling. Now the story of Maya's stay within All Children's Hospital and the ordeal that her parents went through, it lasted months. And during this time, very shocking things come about. But then to add insult to injury, we're informed of findings uh, that just made my blood boil. Now, my jaw was open multiple times throughout this as just small pieces of information were uncovered. And yet the parents, they're still being seen as the villains bent on hurting their daughter. Now, I know there are terrible people out there that can and do abuse their children. But when medical personnel are presented with corroborating information from a prescribing doctor about a condition, and then they completely ignore it in favor of thinking the parents are causing the child harm without doing due diligence, through conversations or examinations, they become the ones who are abusing and harming the children and their families. Now, this is a terribly sad and maddening story. There's so much injustice that's uncovered. I found myself just asking out loud, how in this world can this happen? And I mean, it's one thing to have a story like Maya's that's extreme, but it could be viewed as a one-off. 
But when a reporter got wind of what happened, she did an investigative piece on it. And once it was published, she got calls from all over the country where people had experienced the exact same thing. She even got calls from people who had the exact same experience as Maya's family at the same hospital with the same social worker. So talk about sketchy there. Now, some of these families, they even had it worse in certain aspects because some of those parents were arrested and taken into custody, then sent to jail, all because some social worker deemed that they were trying to harm their kid. It was actually untrue. There are so many layers to this documentary that are just going to make you shake your head in disgust and then tear up by the sheer sadness of the story. Now, one thing that's brought up in this is how several of the parents now would never take their kid to the ER for fear of going through that same ordeal again. And that then, it causes all sorts of issues because parents shouldn't be afraid to take their kids to emergency when it's needed. There really needs to be much better screenings and checks to determine if a child is actually being harmed or if they really do have some rare illness or condition that's causing their symptoms. And that way, after doctors and social workers speak with the child's physician to just get the full picture of what's going on, then the determination can be made from moving the child to protection from the abusers or treating them according to their illness. Now, this is a wonderfully produced documentary, and although it's only an hour and 43 minutes, I did feel the time. And that's not because this was poorly told or contained just irrelevant information. It's that the content is very heavy, and I felt the weight of the story. Then also, because I knew nothing about this or them, I didn't have an idea on where the story was headed, so I had no clue when a conclusion would even be reached. So that did make it feel longer than it actually was. But even with that, I'm not mad in the slightest that I watch this. I mean, I'm mad about the treatment and how the, all this devastated the family. But the information is engaging, captively told, and incredibly heartbreaking. There's no sex or nudity, a lot of profanity, and no violence. Now, as a reminder, I don't give couch ratings to documentaries, but I highly recommend checking out Take Care of Maya on Netflix. It may break your heart, but hopefully it will also bring about some change in a broken system. So, have you seen anything awesome lately? I'd love to hear what you've been watching in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.